you today, and I'm so excited to be here. In fact, I was so excited that I researched some fun facts for you. Like, do you know that somewhere out there you can buy your very own flying tricycle? I know it's hard to believe, but it's actually true. This thing can reach up to 25 miles per hour in the air and around 4,000 feet in altitude. What does that even mean? What about this one? Did you know that for a whole 20 years, a cat served as a mayor? Well, in 1997, an orange cat named Stubbs was elected mayor in Alaska. Okay, last one. Do you know that we follow a God that loves the world so much that he gave his one and only son so that we can have the opportunity to respond to his huge gift? It's crazy, right? But it's true. God loves you. Let's show our appreciation by worshiping him together as a family. Go on, stand up, let's worship and sing together.
All right, everyone. For today's game, you will hear a statement and you have to respond with some special moves as your answer. Let me show you the moves real fast. The first motion we want you to remember is your favorite dance move. It can look different from person to person. Here's mine. Do a dance whenever you want to say yes. Our second motion is the lawn mower. All you gotta do is act like you are mowing the grass, just like this. Perfect. Do the lawn mower for when you want to say no. Are you guys ready to hear the statements? Number one, would you eat a banana and mayonnaise sandwich? Number two, would you skip a friend's awesome party to join your grandparents' game night? Number three, would you travel over eight hours to go to Disney World? Number four, would you sit with someone new instead of your friends? Number five, would you ever do extra chores just so you could get $10? Number six, would you skip playing video games to help your friend with their math homework? Number seven, would you face hardships and suffering to tell others about Jesus? Well, good work. Thanks for playing our game. You guys are great. We will see you next time on Game Time. Did you catch that last statement? Would you face hardships and suffering to tell others about Jesus? God wants us to take the message of Jesus everywhere we go. But what if everywhere we went had troubles? What if people were against us at every turn? Today we're going to hear about some of the hardships that Paul faced as he spoke the message of Jesus to people during his missionary journeys. No matter what Paul went through, he continued to be bold in sharing the good news. Paul was not ashamed to speak of Christ, even when things got tough. Could you do that? I know I want to be able to say that I'm not ashamed to speak about Jesus. And that's our big idea today. Let's say it together. I am not ashamed to speak about Jesus. Good work. Let's make that the motto for how we live our lives. Let's find out more about Paul and how he made Jesus known everywhere. Paul traveled from Athens to the city of Corinth. There he met a Jewish man named Aquila and his wife Priscilla. They were tent makers and so was Paul. So Paul stayed with them and worked with them. On the Sabbath days, Paul went to the synagogue to talk to the Jews and Greeks. He tried to persuade them to believe in Jesus. Some of the people believed and the church grew in Corinth. Paul traveled with his friends Aquila and Priscilla from Corinth to Ephesus. Aquila and Priscilla stayed in Ephesus while Paul visited churches throughout Asia. Paul helped the believers in the cities grow stronger in their faith. While Paul was traveling, a Jew named Apollos came to Ephesus. Apollos knew the scriptures well. Apollos liked to tell people about Jesus and what he taught was true. But he did not understand everything about Jesus, so Priscilla and Aquila took him to their home and explained more to him. Apollos traveled and taught others, using the scriptures to show that Jesus is the Messiah. Now Paul traveled back towards Ephesus. He decided not to stop in Ephesus, but he asked the leaders of the church there to meet him in a nearby city. Paul said to them, I am obeying the Spirit and I'm going to sell to Jerusalem. 
I do not know what will happen to me there, but I know that trouble and jail wait for me. I do not care about my own life. The most important thing is that I finish the work Jesus gave me to do. I want to tell people the good news of God's grace. Paul and the church leaders prayed together and they cried because they knew they might never see Paul again. Then they went with him to the ship to say goodbye. As Paul traveled on his third missionary journey, he used every opportunity to tell people the good news about Jesus and to help the church. Paul was dedicated to Jesus, who called him to do the work of sharing the gospel. What if I told you that I had a big gift for you and inside it was something that you've always needed? But what if I got so shy or nervous that I didn't actually give it to you? We all know that'd be kind of silly of me to hide my gift. The reality is we do this pretty often. We tend to forget about the greatest gift of them all. Do you know what it is? Take a guess. Like Paul, we carry an incredibly important message and it's our job to share it with everyone. We tend to forget about how great the good news of Jesus really is. Paul was someone who didn't hide that message from anyone. Whether he faced hunger, hardships, or even sickness, he pushed through. Paul knew the importance of the message he had and the power that it held. Check this out real fast. The dominoes have a really cool effect. When you push the first one down, the rest fall as well. Just like that, it only takes one person to create a huge difference. I will be honest, this is no easy task, but God tells us that He, the creator of the entire universe, will be there with us. Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Gentile. As Christians, our boldness comes from God, for He gives us both the words to say and the courage to know what actions to take. We have such a great gift inside of us. We have a mission to spread that gift everywhere we go. No matter what we face, we are called to be unashamed. As you close your time together as a family, read through part of our story. It's found in Acts chapter 20. Pray that we can be unashamed of this good news this is important for us as Christians, as we try to spread the gospel to all who will listen. Your mission this week is to write down a plan to reach out to some of your neighbors and tell them about Christ. There are so many families that need to hear about Jesus, so why don't we start to make a difference? It takes only one to create it, just like the dominoes we just observed. Thanks for watching. We will see you all next week.